Okay. I'm live. Alright, uh, I don't even have the game open yet. Um, we're just gonna jump right into the game. Um, which is here. I can't find it. Uh, okay, so I'm... Uh, I am doing what I said last time. Uh, last time I talked about um, one game. Ah, oh, Mr. Orc is already here. First and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing uh, what I talked about last time. Uh, I'm, first of all, playing the game that I didn't play last time that I planned to play. But I also talked about there's another game that kind of has a similar aesthetic to this one that I'm going to go ahead and play. I kind of technically helped with it. I just made the logo for the game. I'm not really a graphics designer, but I just, like, threw something together and the guy seemed to like it. So, whatever. Guess I'm going to play his game. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do, and then I have, uh, just, it's only three games tonight, I, with, uh, job and all that, I seem to be getting sleepy earlier, so I, uh, rather, I'd rather play it, uh, safer, safer than sorry, um, so, yeah, well, uh, we're just gonna jump right into it, starting with Exit E, oh, let's look at the page real fast. Willst thou soar or willst thou suck? Exony is an RPG in the style of the NES greats. Engage in the story of a doomed kingdom and the seven heroes who set out to save it. Six allies, each with their own quests. Fearsome bosses, each more evil than the last. Six powerful classes for your hero. Intense difficulty for JRPG veterans. Uh, that means, I, I'm guessing that means, uh, <laughs> my prediction now, my cynical prediction now, that means, uh, I only balance this for myself, but not for my players, so it's gonna be unfairly difficult. Uh, use the download link to, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, uh, let's see how this goes, um, and I hope you guys like this aesthetic, because the next game looks somewhat similar to it. It opened on the wrong screen. Here we go. Uh, let's start the timer. Okay, no WASD. This is a weird layout. Why is it like that? <laughs> it's just strange. I don't know why it couldn't all just fit on one screen. Oh, because it's 4x3. It's not 16x9. Still, I mean, there's a lot of padding between these options that could have been, like, cut out. Alright, options. Sure, we'll turn on always run, cursed memory, keyboard config. Okay, at least they have this here. Alright, good. Doesn't start with WASD. I always recommend setting this as the default because, as you can see, in this layout, you have the arrow keys there, so... Basically, uh, it does move some stuff around because uh, obviously in the default layout you have uh, page up and page down here. Um, but uh, I think overall uh, this is totally okay um, to use. So I would just recommend starting here. Um, so anyways, doesn't matter. At least they have that there so they get the, the accessibility point. Pixel perfect mode off. That's good. I, I don't really like the um, sharpening on the pixel stuff. You were born in the kingdom of Exony, a beautiful baby boy. As you grew older, you became... Um... Let's just stick with, uh, I'm hoping that a soldier is just going to be kind of your jack-of-all-trade. Kind of the easier option. Um, so we'll go with a soldier. Hardened by years of battle, the soldier is blessed by Thorn, god of war. They can use most armor and weapons, but gain no magical abilities. Soldiers attack twice per round, dealing massive damage. Uh, it kind of sucks that... There's no magic abilities, but, um, sure, 
I'll go with it. This is where your story truly begins. Your name, which might go down in history, is... Jaden is fine. Then an army from the south invaded. They came in ships which were so fast the soldiers barely saw them. Sometime last night, the Dark Prince slayed the king. Does any of this matter? Good riddance. We all have our gripes with the ruler's son, but a lot of innocent men died in that war. If you were there, you'd have... Somebody help! There are monsters seeping under the walls! Monsters? Preposterous. Have you ever heard such rubbish, Jaden? Ah, uh, that reminds me. Take what's in that chest. Consider it a gift. Let's go see what this monster talk is all about, eh? It's kind of funny. He just slams the chest there. Alright, getting right into it. Your father gifted you an old bow. Does it automatically equip, or do I need to equip it? Looks like I need to equip it. I really kind of feel like just quality of life thing is that it should... Uh, just automatically equip that, or at the very least, open up your equip menu for you. So... What did she say? Monsters? Can you play the piano? Not really. I don't really like that my guy is constantly doing the walking animation. <laughs> Monsters, I don't believe it. There's been no monsters for hundreds of years. Gods, help us. There truly are monsters. Jane, it's time for you to make use of the weapon I gave you. It's a nice little transition effect. I kind of feel like they, they've kind of so far mastered the NES look. Jaden won the battle. 10 XP found. I'm not so sure about their waveforms, but that's getting like really nitpicky. Um, I feel like it's the waveforms are not quite accurate to the NES, but I mean, how pedantic do you want to be if the synthesizers are accurate or not? No, son, I love. Oh, and that's that. All right. All right, we're just jumping right into it. All we can do is say our prayers and mourn. Oh, see? It's kind of weird that they're hiding behind that. I thought it was kind of like a secret, maybe. Oh, there we go. It's just they have a move route. Okay. I'm not sure NES had... Uh Transparency on sprites? Oh, maybe they- maybe it did, actually. I honestly am not familiar enough with the hardware. Usually, like, tiles that you'd layer on top, like, if they have different palettes, um... You would see it, like, take up- but uh, maybe I'm thinking of a different system. I think maybe, like, the Commodore is like that, like... This whole grid space would have to be dedicated to this uh, palette. But again, that's also getting really quite pedantic about, uh, you know, th how accurate it is. Because um, the NES had a pretty limited palette, um, and even more limited for um, the sprites. And I think it would be a, uh, quite the headache to emulate that. And probably not worth the extra effort, honestly, especially for a free game. I've been still hot from the anvil. I have 250. I don't know why that would lower your defense, but okay. Um... I'm gonna try it. What 
for about you. Armor? Yeah. Alright, I thought I saw one that said, like, plus 10, minus defense. Or minus agility. That's crazy. Plus 10? All the other ones just suck in comparison. Alright. Oh, I see, because those are, like, other slots. Can you sell your equipment? Yes, you can. Alright. So we'll sell that. And sell that. Alright, let's see if we can find some potions or something. Welcome, welcome. Heal some HP. It would be nice if it would say, like, how much that sum is. Alright, I already have one potion, so I'll just buy one more. And I'll buy the antidote. Just so we don't have a repeat from the that last game that I played uh, last week. <laughs> the bullshit poison. Alright, that's probably fine. Oof. Alright, it would be nice if I was given a destination as to where to go. It's like fake Moonlight Sonata. <laughs> The, the music is weird because it's like non-copyright versions of already uh, songs that already exist in the public domain. Because like the, I think like the very first song, when we were like in the tavern talking to the father, um, it, it sounded like the ants go marching in, but it was not. And, and then like, same, same thing for this one, which sounds like Moonlight Sonata, but not. Uh, I'm the remain here until the goblins in the area have been defeated. You're welcome, citizen. Okay. Are there rent? Oh, all right. That answers that question. Alright, not so bad so far. Oh my god. Oh, there's poison. Let's see if it will be cured after battle or am I stuck with it? Alright, now they're doing some serious damage, and that poison also... That poison ticked for more than the damage they're doing to me. Yeah, 64! Holy shit, man! Okay, so it persists. Good to know. Critical on him. Oh, so the fucking slime does it too. God damn, that ticks for a lot. Is 
Empathy. Having poison enemies drop antidotes is not a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, I don't... Yeah, you're, you're right about that. I'm glad they have the foresight to at least have the enemies drop the antidote, which is a good solution compared to that game that I played uh, last week, where I just kind of got stuck in a loop because of its bullshit poison. Um... I think my main complaint here is that it ticks for more damage than the enemies are doing. Like, their base damage is less than one tick of the, uh, poison. The frequency of, uh, combat here is kind of crazy. Also really inconsistent, because these enemies are super fucking easy. My poison will be permanent with no antidotes, even. <laughs> Sounds great, man! Let's see if I can heal up. I'll say. Did it say free of charge? That's nice. Oh, and you save like this, too. Yep, it is free of charge. Okay, neat. I, I swear, like, there was a question not so long ago on the RPG Maker forums, basically asking, like, what's the point of uh, charging for inns? And I guess this guy's answer was, I'm not gonna charge for inns. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, I skipped it because I was mashing. Oh well, who cares? What's this abandoned house? Son, due to these unprecedented times and my advancing age, I fear I may not be long for this world. Before your mother passed, she gave me this charm, and now, Jaden, I give it to you. Found mother's charm. Okay, what is mother's charm? Let's see. A charm which one raises all your stats by 5%. Here's the scary thing about. Uh, putting percent, uh, raising stats by percents, um, because 5% now is, like, not much, as you can see, um, we have, uh, my 12 going up to 13, eh, no big deal, you know, a lot of these are having small, are small progressions, but, uh, <laughs> uh with levels, uh, suddenly that 5%, um, will start to grow quite quickly. It's almost like uh, exponential growth. So, um, things can get out of hand pretty quick. I know this because, uh, my items in my own game actually do raise stats based on percentages, and they raise stats by quite a large percentage, too. Not 5%, we're talking like... Uh, we're talking like 20% or 30%. <laughs> Um, but that's mostly because my game uses small numbers. Um, and it's just funny watching how those numbers can quickly warp over time. Gold richer, oh boy. Level three. That five percent is gonna be worth a lot more now. Wait, watch out. Party member. Yes. Let's kill that goblin warrior. Oh, that was fast. All right. Jaden's party won the battle! That was close! This part of the forest is teeming with goblins lately. What are you doing here? Just exploring. Chosen a bad, blah, blah, blah. You've chosen a bad place to go wandering. In any case, you may just 
you may be just who I'm looking for. My name's Maya, this forest is my home, but in the last couple of days, something strange has been happening. Something sh wait, what? Ah, oh, I don't remember the song, never mind. <laughs> Uh, see, this was once a sacred grove, at least according to the druids who used to live in the kingdom back in the distant past. The goblins seem to be looking for the druid... druidic flower. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. You have to come with me and defeat the goblin chief. I believe he's trying to siphon some kind of dormant power in the grove. You take the lead. Sure thing. Just trust me, okay? I like how just no-nonsense the... The dialogue is uh, the frequency of random encounters though is a little bit annoying Uh, the timer is not correct. The play timer. Will it show in the menu? Yeah. It says I've already been playing for 41 minutes. That's so horribly wrong. <laughs> um... I think this also has to do with the, um, fact that I'm on a 144Hz monitor. Um... There is a plugin that will, um... That will fix that. Uh, in fact, I think Kathril, uh, made it. All my years, I've never been able to find the key to the store. My best guess is that it's somewhere out in the wider world. In fact, let's put up the... There we go. Look at our frame counter. Alright, cool. I figured that there might not be random encounters since this was, uh, like a safe area where you could save. Uh, but I'm clearly wrong. Well, that was weak. Found a dagger. Don't think it's gonna be much better. Yeah. She can equip the dagger, but it's uh, worse than her old bow, so that's fine. Might as well just rest. Anti-death potion. All right, right on. Sort of a weird place to put the chest. It's like straight up a ladder. You know, one thing I haven't even checked. I'm gonna minimize this for a second. All right, it's a little bit loud. That's what I was worried about. a copper amulet. What does that do? She needs to equip an accessory, so might as well equip it on her. Attack plus 5%? Sure. Because his does 5% to everything, right? Yeah, all stats. It's a little bit OP. A 
At least my initial prediction about the game's balancing uh, was wrong. Definitely appreciate how this game's just um, gotten us right to the action. I didn't even realize that it's already been 23 minutes into the game. I don't know if I'm saying like I'm having a super good time with this game, but I'm also not having a terrible time with it. You know, it set out to accomplish a goal, and I think it accomplished that goal. So this is the nuisance who's been storming my grove. This grove belongs to ancient druids, as does the... Druids? Why would I care about the property of some dead elves? This plant has been just lying here for centuries. If you wanted to stop me from siphoning the dru druidic arcana from this plant, you're too late. How about a sample of my power? Boss fight! Lower an enemy's attack. How about the Goblin Chief? Let's take care of the Warrior first. Um, just start picking away at him. Clear out the ads. Well, that was easy. No, I bet this plan's pretty easy too. Well, of course, if he evades the attack. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yep, there it goes. Woo! And we get a chest. Again, just the no nonsense. They're gone, no no spiel at the end after they they're dead. We just move right on. A seed, maybe that means we can plant a new druidic flower. Druidic flowers are different from most plants. They need to be planted in the dark. I guess here. Ah, life reborn once more. Corrupted by the goblins I was. Now I can be pure again. You, young elf, have continued the legacy of your forefathers. My forefathers, Druidic Plant, my lord. I am no god, just a messenger for the father of nature. Your forefathers, my child, were the ancient elves of this Druidic Grove. If your consciousness passes between generations, then you must know where the elves are now. Am I the last of my kind? The answers you seek will be found in the uh, world outside these woods, if your companion allows. You should search for your lineage. The answers will come to you. Now, my thanks. Take this gift and go. Right on. Camping kit. This allows you to set up camp instantly on the world map. Okay, neat. I appreciate the expansion on utility. So would I just use it from like key items? Yes. Oh, and then you just have like a little... Oh, that's nice. 
What could that plant have meant? The key to the, my lineage is out there in the world. Rearrange the party? No, that's fine. I'm good. Save and rest? Yep. What's that bucket doing there? It's the piss bucket, I guess. What's this down here? Aha! My god, this archer can't kill <laughs> worth a damn. Oh my god, <laughs> takes more than two turns for the archer to kill these things. You can definitely see the soldier does a lot more damage. Found antidotes, whoop. time for the game. Level 5. Let's just get back to town and then kind of just wrap up from there. Alright. So, first, um, explore some of these other buildings. Oh, Jaden, make yourself right at home. I heard about your father. It's really a shame. I have a gift. Thought it might make you feel better. An encyclopedia. It served me well in my adventuring days. In that book, you can catalog any monsters, weapons, armors, or statuses which you encounter. Stay safe, Jaden. It's nice that that's an item, but I really feel like you shouldn't have to explore to get that item. Like, there's an argument for, like, why the, um... Mother's accessory is so powerful. It's that you know you had to kind of explore to be awarded with it But in order to get information, it's really kind of shitty that you lock like essential information behind uh, Gameplay that should just be available from the start really um, At least it's kept track of everything that I've already encountered. I don't have to um, Re-encounter those things to add it to the uh, Encyclopedia. Um, how much money did I have? I don't think any of that's gonna change. I have a lot of money. Where is that potion shop again? I guess it doesn't really matter since I'm gonna stop, but I feel like I should stock up. I want to see, uh, how, is there a limit to how many you can buy? Uh, at least not within what I can afford. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think that's going to be it. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. We're done with that game, though. Um, real fast, let's give it a grade. Uh, polish, I'm not gonna give it the polish point. It, it's like almost there to earn the polish point. Like, like I had mentioned while I was playing the game, like it had a goal in mind and it set out to accomplish that goal and it accomplished it. It is feels like an NES game. There's some stuff you could get kind of pedantic about, um, but uh, you know I'm, I'm I don't really care. Uh, I'll leave that to the I don't know fucking NES nerds to debate how accurate it is of having the right color palette and the accuracy of sprites of it displaying sprites and the uh, waveforms that it used um, for its synthesizers. Um, one th the one thing that I will say that does take away from the polish point is that um, 
it is the frequency of the random encounters is kind of annoying and the uh, encyclopedia which i feel like has important information about the game is withheld from the player unless they explore um so yeah i'm not going to give them the point but they're like right on the verge of getting it i feel like much closer than a lot of the other games but it doesn't matter in my score. It's either a zero or a one. There is no almost. You either did it or you didn't. Um, accessibility, they'll get the point since they actually have, um, you know, keyboard config in there. Um, clarity. I kind of get why there is no clarity because um, that's kind of the design of games back then. But, like, not everything about the old games were was always a good thing there are some things that it's good that we have moved forward we have progressed in the way that we've designed games so despite it wanting to emulate you know old nes games the lack of clarity is one thing i probably would have modernized um i will give it credit here though it it did they did the developer at least made sure that you are funneled somewhat funneled into where you need to go because they had that that like npc that like blocked the way forward that i bumped into so you know at least they did funnel the player um man i don't know i feel like there should be some more direction given. And here's the excuse. Here's here's the uh, excuse I'm going to give why I'm not going to give the clarity point. This is what's going to, like, break the tie. Like, I almost feel like because they were able to funnel the player into where you needed to go, um, that, that would normally get them the point, despite the area being kind of big, and they kind of just throw you to the wolves right after your dad dies... So it's, it's, it can feel a little bit intimidating. However, I could give it a pass. The reason why I'm not going to give it the point here um, is because of the encyclopedia thing. Uh, the encyclopedia thing uh, should have been given to the player from the beginning. So that's going to be the tiebreaker here. Um, information that could have uh, made things more clear was not given to them at the beginning, making things not as clear as they should be. Uh, balance actually seemed fine. It got a little wacky there at the beginning, but uh, it's fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it that. Um, unique identity, technically not really, because its identity is trying to be not unique. That is kind of what the game set out to be: is not unique. It's trying to be something else it's trying to be an nes jrpg it's not trying to be uh anything beyond that um so if we were to look at it from that lens uh what i've already said is it set out to accomplish a goal and it, it i think it accomplished it i'm gonna say if that's the lens that we're looking through on the identity part i'm gonna say yeah it achieved that so i'll give it the point so a four not so bad um and like I would say it could even get higher because we have just those two points here like the clarity is zero and the polish is zero but both of those are like I'm really close to saying yeah you get the point there. Um, there's just like some really minor things that could use some some adjusting to get those points. But overall actually you know I didn't hate the game um, which is kind of like a like a first. <laughs> It's not a first. It's not a first. It's a, I, it might be a first for uh, RPG Maker games. There's definitely been games that I've played that were not RPG Maker games that I enjoyed. For example, last time, Patch Quest, uh, I enjoyed. Um, but, uh, yeah, it wasn't terrible, actually. Um, I Like I said, I brought this up a couple of times. I just really appreciate its no-nonsense approach to just getting you into the action. Whenever there's a cutscene, it is, like, just fucking straight to the point. It is just uh, unapologetically straight to the point. Um, I'm almost kind of envious. I wish I could actually do my own writing that way, but I feel like I can't 
cut that much out of my writing. It's, it almost becomes ridiculous. It becomes, it starts to feel a little bit like a parody at that point. It's, it, it's cut. The dialogue is cut up so much to be so straight to the point. And that's not a bad thing. Like I said, I really appreciate that. Um, compared to so many games that I've played in the past that uh, just waste your fucking time um, with just way too much dialogue. Again, one of the games I played last time, the, the fishing game, uh, just, like, spent the first five minutes just chatting bullshit, um, almost basically repeating points and having a bunch of unnecessary extra dialogue. It's fine to have some extra dialogue in there for characterization, but it's, like, it was excessive. So, and that just seems par for the course for, uh, a lot of RPG Maker games. So, it was good to finally have a game that just didn't do that. So, good job. All right, so next, uh, this would normally be my chatting time, but I don't really have anything to chat about. Um, and surprisingly, it seems to be a pretty, speaking of chat, it seems to be a pretty quiet day in chat today. No uh, Wrath of Wood is here. No Mr. Primo. No Alice. Alice? Why does that not sound right? Why does that not sound right? What the fuck is her name? <laughs> it's a good thing she's not here because I don't remember her fucking name. Um, oh my god, why has it slipped my name? Uh, I've slipped my name? Jesus Christ. Why has it slipped my mind? Um, Is it Alice? That just doesn't sound right, but that's like what my mind wants to say. Um... I swear she just made a status post not that long. No, it is Alice. Alice Gristle. Why does that just not sound right? <laughs> it just doesn't sound right my when I say it. I don't know why. Yeah, I know, folks do usually come a little bit later, but usually by the end of the game... This is the reason why I put the chatting section, like, after the first game, is because I really want to chat about stuff when there are more people here to actually chat with. So, you know, I start the game... I start the stream off with just, like, a, what I feel like is probably going to be the least interesting game, ironically. Um... It's just a it's just a guess, by the way, on what is going to be the least interesting. I obviously didn't play the game before the stream, so I don't really honestly know if it's the least interesting or not. But I make a guess as to whether it is or not, and then uh, that's what I start with. And then I hope that while I'm playing that, um, that uh, you know, some folks will show up. So that by that way, by the time I get to my chatting time, uh, we have some folks to chat with. But. Uh, no one's shown up yet. <laughs> it's it's a quiet day here. I'm a little bit surprised, too, because um, this past week, um, I had a little bit more activity on the, um, uh, on the archive than usual. Uh, the viewership is actually somewhat below average, strangely enough. Um, the viewership was below average. However, the number of comments I had on it was above average. There were two new people... Or I don't know if they're new or not, but two people that I've never seen comments from before um, left a comment on the video. So I was just a little bit surprised. I was like, oh, two new commenters. Uh, interesting. Um, so I don't know. I was just feeling feeling positive that just maybe, just maybe, that uh, maybe uh, this uh, stream would be a little bit more lively. Mm, that does remind me. Um, actually, this is... Um, I'm glad I remember this, because this is actually good stuff to put into the Just Chatting section. Um, I do want to mention uh, the Crimson Hope dev. Um, despite how how much I didn't like the game, and it seemed like the f folks who did watch uh, my stream uh, also thought it was kind of a ridiculous game. Um, actually, the developer is really cool. Um post that shit on the Twitter and the forums. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm terrible about that kind of stuff. Um, I was always kind of raised on like, um, like pretty strict, um, form, form etiquette. Um, so I've 
always feel weird about like doing self promotion stuff. Um, but uh, you're you're right. Um, why don't we do that now while I'm just chatting? And um, on that note, as I was saying, um, so the developer of Crimson Hope, uh, despite the game being terrible, uh, <laughs> uh, the developer is really cool. Uh, he had a good response. Uh, maybe I can bring it up here in just a second. Right now, I'm trying to. Uh, get the link to the stream. It would be really nice if YouTube would just have it here in the live studio dashboard. Um, maybe if I go to edit. No, I don't think so. Um, that's kind of annoying. Um, so I think I have to leave the dashboard and go to like my studio. Uh, <laughs> Oh, here we go. It's YouTube. YouTube is, oh, hello, me. YouTube is recommending my own stream to me. <laughs> Thanks, YouTube. I didn't know I was live. Glad to know that I'm live. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. Um, I'm. I'm streaming. Streaming some. Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's let's do my usual YouTube clickbait. I dove deep into the uh itch yo dumpster to pull out at Takuma Gals. Actually, let's not do that. Pull out some. Lost NES games at Takuma. Takuma. Gao. Um. Streaming. There we go. Let's fix that. There we go. Alright. <laughs> there. I don't have Twitter because that place is a uh, hellhole. Um, so, I'll post it on the forums. And, um, yep. That's the only place I'm going to post it. So, anyways. Uh, yeah, let's uh, pull up... Um, Crimson Hope, so I can get a reminder of what the uh, dev had said. Uh, he said, oh, thanks for the feedback, and this is detailed feedback. I will make major corrections to the combat system if I have time. Uh, I'm taking note of your remarks for my future games. Anyways, I really appreciate that you took the time to play my game. See you. Um, I think he also, he also subscribed to my YouTube channel, and um, I... Did he leave a comment on the video? I don't remember. I think he left a comment on the the previous video as well. So, like I said, uh, he took it in strides, which I always appreciate. Surprisingly, you would think that should just be universal truth of people being able to take feedback um, and being receptive to it. But, of course, as we all know, that's not true. Um, so, I always just want to say thanks to the developers who are cool about it. Um, it also, to me, when I see that as well, it, it gives me, um, it makes me think that they have the best hope in the future for their game because they're, they're willing to learn from their mistakes and how to improve, how to improve things for their next project. So even if the current project sucks and, you know, it's not really clicking very well, um, it was a great learning experience. And if they are capable of learning then that means the next game will probably be much better and even if that game sucks it's still probably going to be twice the game the previous one which means the next game that they make is going to probably be twice the game that that one was and eventually i think they're going to hit something good so because they're able to learn and they're able to improve so yeah uh i just always want to say thanks to the cool devs for being cool um so anyways, um, is there anything else? I felt like there was one more thing I wanted to hit on. 
that it like popped in my mind, but it, it's already just, it, I guess it, it popped in my mind. It was like, oh, you should talk about that. And now I think it's gone already. So, oh, well. <laughs> um, I mean, the natural reaction for parents when you tell them their baby is ugly is usually them trying to stab you with a knife. Uh, not the whole stab with a knife thing, but, uh, I do have some, uh, experience with, uh, something like that. Yep, you are correct. Um, not just with your metaphor. I mean, the metaphor is very accurate. Um, but it's also, uh, literally, uh, somewhat true. Not the, not the knife part, but, um, yeah. Uh having to deal with parents sometimes and parents don't want to hear hey by the way your kid's a piece of shit <laughs> i have done everything i can within my powers to fairly and adequately discipline him um however uh there is nothing that i can do to discipline your kid because your kid is just a piece of shit please take your kid home talk to him talk some fucking sense into him and stop fucking spoiling him because he's a fucking brat. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, let's just, uh, I guess we can just move on. Oh no, what did I do? Oh, I, I changed this. Okay, oh, and now it updates the, the timer. I, so I will say this, um... On the whole, um, live split thing, um, I've had it, like, crash. Like, last time it crashed, uh, when I opened the VX Ace game up. But I'm actually wondering, um, because just kind of as a joke, I, I, I don't know why, um, I had started the timer the other day when I left my house. I guess I was just gonna just time how long I was gone for whatever fucking reason. I don't know. <laughs> but that's what I did. I just left the the timer running. And um why is my there we go. Um I left the timer running and um when I came back home uh the timer had stopped somewhere at like 35 minutes. Um which is uh, definitely not how long I was gone. I was gone for more than an hour. Um, so I'm wondering if the time that it crashed with um, the VX Ace game yet, uh, last week, um, if that was like maybe just like coincidental timing and maybe there's some something with live split that's... Uh, because it's been over engineered, it might also have some problems with it. Um, we'll have to see. If it if it causes problems, then I'll have to be on the search again for a new way to time games. Anyways, let's stop chatting and let's just uh, go to the next game. So I'll delete that. And next is going to be Eternal Tale. Uh, as I said, this is a game that I, I made the, the logo for. I didn't make the art, uh, the guy, I think, mentioned that, uh, he, um, oh, it's just jumping right into it. Okay, alright. 1,000 years ago, a great threat faced the world. The evil queen Zola attained Im immortality and conquered the world with her powerful magic and army of monsters. A group of four heroes arose the task of... Uh, defeating her and through and though they fought valiantly the evil queen could not be felled with the last of their strength the four heroes placed the magic seal upon the queen of Zola locking them with it oh, okay well, man <laughs> it would be nice if I could progress it myself 1,000 years ago uh, great I can't read this font 1,000 years ago a great threat faced the world the evil Queen Zola attained immortality and conquered the world with her powerful magic and army of monsters. A group of four heroes rose to the task of defeating her and through the- and though they fought valiantly, the evil Queen could not be felled. With the last of their strength, the four heroes placed a magic seal upon the Queen Zola, locking her within the tomb that she could not escape from. Many years have passed and the spirits of the four heroes have continued to be guarded by the seals of binding the villain in her tomb since that day, but the force of the evil never rests and those that worship the evil Queen have begun to make their move. <sighs> <coughs> Don't do that. 
Wow, it's been a while since I've uh, seen that one. Um, the auto-scrolling text. I don't think I've seen that one since probably, like, back when I was doing uh, IGMC games. Um, yeah, uh, auto-scrolling text. Please don't do it. I don't even remember what I was saying before I was um, interrupted by the auto-scrolling text. Uh, I guess that thought's gone. Alright. Oh! Right, this game. Oh, holy shit, I just realized, too. Weird! What the fuck? Can we skip that? Yeah. Okay, so... That's... I mean, I guess it, it, it kinda makes sense. I think I see what he did here, too. Okay, I think it's still... Okay. Let's let's bring up the store page. So, I think I see what he did here. Um, so, this is, I think, still my logo, but it's not... Mine was rendered in, like, a, a high resolution. And so, I think he tried to fake, like, a low resolution, like, a... Um, you know, pixel art version of the logo, because it looks kind of similar. He changed the colors of it. Anyways, let's take a look at it. Um, I didn't even look at the page anyways. Um, here's the store page, um, which is just a giant wall of text. Um, would be great if this was kind of broken up into different sections and stuff like that. Different bullet points. It kind of even looks like um, he used bullet points on this fake, um, like, uh, magazine spread. Um, he, I was gonna also mention that, um, he is, uh, uses AI stuff quite a lot. I don't know if this is AI art. It doesn't really reek of AI. Um, most of the lines seem to make sense. Um, so it could have just been maybe a stock photo, or maybe it was AI art, because the hair does get kind of a little bit wacky there. Um, so it could have just been like a AI art photo that's just been enhanced with some Photoshop. But uh, like definitely for sure, I know he had mentioned that this was uh, AI generated. Um, you can kind of see some weird wackiness going on here with the the line art, like the the hair kind of has like a weird bump in it there. Um, so it, it does kind of have some, uh, you know, some some AI ness to it. Um, so, anyways, um, what uh, what I had just done was this um, logo, and actually, that logo doesn't look quite like the logo that I did. Never mind. I'm gonna change what I said earlier. Yeah, this looks completely different. Um, so, anyways, he just had the logo for the box art itself. That's all I did, and, uh, I guess to, um, I, re I really should have paused the timer, that's okay. Um, and I guess really, um, yeah, I don't know, anyways. He just wanted it for the box art, so. I did that logo for him. Uh, I haven't actually played the game. Um, I will admit, I, I got a little bit, uh, impatient with him. Um, so, first of all, uh, I guess, uh, consider this my apologies to you, um, to inform everyone, um, when I did the logo, um, it, it kind of, it, when I did it, he kind of, like, um, it seemed like every time I showed him the, the logo, it's like he would have, like, some sort of excuse, and so I kind of lost patience with it, because it's like, I, I really have very low patience for this kind of shit where, like, uh, people don't just give you a straight answer, like, it's like, if you don't like it, just fucking say it. I hate when people, like, beat around the bush. Like, come on, I'm a big boy. You can say, sorry, I don't like it. I don't want to use it. Um, so anyways, so I was, I thought that's what was going on there. Um, cause it's like, I designed the logo and he was like, um, he was like, well, I don't think I can use those logos because I don't own the license to the font. And I was like, uh, these are default Windows fonts, uh, don't worry, you can use these, no problem. And then he was like, oh, well, the font size is too large to put on the box. And it's like, well, buddy, you can just downscale the art. <laughs> it's, just... 
So, anyways, so I kind of lost patience with him for having constantly having an excuse for not using the art. It does seem like he used it in the end. I think I'm pretty sure that is, that was my art. Um, so, anyways, very sorry for losing my patience. Um, I I clearly should have been more patient with you. So this is my formal apology for losing losing patience with you when we were originally discussing this kind of stuff. Um, if you did use my art, thank you for, for using it. It looks good, whether it's my art or not. Um, I'm excited to try your game. So anyways, <laughs> let's, let's continue with the, this. All right, let's check options. Is there WASD? No. Um, curse memory is fine. Tech speed, that's fine. Auto battle. We'll leave that off. Turn on display FPS. Um, looks kind of weird because FPS is like on top of the actual frame counter itself. Like they're clipping into each other. Stretch screen? Oh, okay. I wouldn't really call it stretch stretch screen. I'd call it like fit screen to uh, monitor or something like that. Stretch makes me think it's gonna literally stretch it to fit 16 by 9. Which is just a heinous thing to do. I see he's lowered all the volume down to 40%. How's the volume uh, on the mixer? A little bit on the quiet side. We'll just turn it up here. Yeah, that seems better. But no WASD, go figure. Um, it is an MZ game, um, but I do think uh, Visual Stella has... Um, uh, I think Visual Stella has... Uh, like a keyboard config thing uh, for free, just like uh, Yonfly does. Awaken, child of man. You have been chosen to undertake a task of great importance. Without you to intervene, a world shall be devoured by darkness. You were not the only candidate for this task. However, it was determined that you possess the greatest chance of success. This is why you were chosen. This trial you must undertake shall be filled with peril, but know this, without your presence, this world will no longer exist. You shall be blessed with a new form, as well as new name, to allow you to better fit within the new dimension that you shall occupy. Your new form shall become visible to you now. Tell me, child of man, what shall your new na what shall be your new name? Luca is fine. Luca, it's a fine name. It suits you well, child of man. Luca, you shall be granted a number of gifts which will aid you on your journey. The first gift shall be a mark upon your right hand, which will prove to the natives of this world that you are one that can be trusted. The second gift shall be the gift of aptitude in the arts of combat and magic. Though you will enter this world empty-handed, you shall be able to wield nearly any weapon or spell that you obtain. With these blessings and your strengths of will, I believe that you shall succeed in your quest. Now go, Luca, step into the light of this new world. You are this world's only hope. I do appreciate that the, um... So it's one of those minor attention to details, you know, this is basically polishing is what this is, um, that um, they, he did a fade in, but it wasn't like a smooth 60 frame per second, like fade from uh, pure white all the way down gradually to uh, zero. Instead, it was like in three jumps, like three frames. Um, which would be appropriate for the NES. I'm not sure if uh, NES was capable of uh, having like a gr uh, gradual, um, grad, whatever. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't think the NES was capable of doing 
like what RPG Maker can do if you just do like the tint screen over 60 frames or whatever. Okay, the pot just disappeared. What what happened to it? Oh, I guess it's like searching it. You're just breaking it. Uh, yeah, I think it might be nice if there was, um, I don't know, like some sort of animation or something. Um, speaking of minor nitpick here, um, but. The <laughs> Girl, the back of your head look ridiculous. <laughs> I feel like there should be some more like different shades of colors in the hair. It looks a little bit flat here. Anyways, like I said, minor nitpicks. Healing herb. Healing herb. Guess we'll just go here. That little do 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 do. It's kind of cute. Welcome to Alfregard Castle. Thank you. Please save the princess. If something were to happen to her, I'm sure the king would never recover from his grief. Healing herb. Seem to have a bunch of those now. Let's go talk to this lady. If you find food items on your travels, you can eat them to permanently increase one of your statistics. Eat healthy, and you'll become stronger than ever before. Good to know. Oh, I can break the barrels too. Mana herb. I'm not sure if my eyes are playing tricks on me, but there's like... Can I see that in OBS? I don't really see it... Uh, oh, I guess I was safe. I don't really see it in OBS. I barely see it here. In... On my screen. Um, there's like... Like a vertical uh, axis here. That there's like some weird like warping that's happening. Like some sort of like, I don't know, rounding error or something with the way that it's drawing the tiles. It's very subtle. Anyways, I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering what that's about. Maybe I'm just fucking crazy, too. Maybe it doesn't actually exist. Maybe I'm just seeing things. Let's talk to the king first. What do you have to say? I'm King Baltir, ruler of the kingdom of Alfgard. I apologize, but I cannot offer you an audience at this moment. A most terrible series of events has taken place. An evil dark knight known as Ashk came to the castle and whisked poor Princess Rena away, my only daughter taken by his, by this fiend. I have sent my knights after the fiend, but they have all returned injured and defeated. It was unfortunate that the captain of the knights, Alfin, was away during the attack, else he may have been able to save the princess. However, I worry that even the captain's strength won't be enough to defeat Ash. Um, this dark knight is truly terrifying and powerful, if only there were someone else equally as powerful as Captain Alfin. Wait a moment, that mark on your right hand, is it the symbol of the Chosen One? Could it be? Yes, this is without a doubt the mark of the Chosen One. You are clearly a hero sent from another world to save our kingdom. No, our world from the forces of evil. What is your name, Chosen One? Luca, is it? I see. It's an honor to make your acquaintance. Chosen One, Luca, will you please aid us in our time of need? Always got to test the game logic here. If I say no... Oh my, but without your princess, you may be a terrible fate, and perhaps the world as a whole may face a dark future. You please reconsider and give us aid. Uh, no. Oh my, but with- oh, okay, is this just gonna repeat? I'm gonna try one more time. I think it's just repeating. Yeah. Alright. 
Uh, thank you ever so much, Chosen One. Now please allow us to explain the situation in more detail. Captain Alfin. Yes, sire. If you would please tell the Chosen One in greater detail about the plight our world faces. At once, sire. Pardon me, but I overheard the conversation that you were having with the king. It's a pleasure to meet you, Chosen One, Luca. I'm afraid that the princess's kidnapping is not the only problem we have. You see, the reason why the villain has taken the princess is because she is a descendant of one of the four heroes of legend. The spirits of the four heroes hold a series of seals in place, which bind a great villain from the distant past, preventing her escape. It is said that only those who are descendants of the four heroes can break each of the seals, and we believe that this is why Ashka has kidnapped Princess Reyna. We fear that the Dark Knight may torture her in order to make her release a seal, and if this happens, not only will the princess's life be in danger, but the lives of all the people across the world. It pains me to know that I had not been on an it pains me to know that I, had I not been on an errand while the kidnapping took place, I might have been able to prevent all of this from happening. But I cannot dwell on the past. What is done is done, and the only thing I can do is track down and defeat the fiend and rescue the princess. If you truly are the chosen one, I ask that you accompany me on the journey. I can sense great strength within you and the potential of the great magical power prowess, you will certainly be a worthy ally. I myself am skilled in various types of weaponry, but I cannot use any magic. However, perhaps my hobby of making potions and salves may prove useful if we were to become injured in battle. I am certain that this, with our combined strength, we shall be able to rescue the princess and defeat the Dark Knight, Ashk. Alfin has joined the party! Woo! Captain Alfin, Chosen One, Luca. Yes, sire. It is said that the spirit of the hero Nimu resides in the White Tower. Ashk has mostly taken the princess there. To reach the White Tower, you'll need to travel west, past the town of Ladat, and into Passage Cave. I will grant you permission to proceed through there, so you may have access to the western side of the Alpha Guard. Please say my daughter go forth to the White Tower and defeat the evil Dark Knight Ashk. Uh, yes, sire, I will not fail you, nor the princess. We should prepare for our journey in the nearby town of Ladat and then set off for the White Tower. Let us go. Okie doke. I feel like that was a lot of talking. See, notice how far we've made it into this game compared to the other game. I mean, admittedly, there's like the first, uh, I think nearly five minutes of this game that I was just talking shit and forgot to pause the timer. But even still, um... That would be like 10 minutes of just nonsense. <sighs> Found a training spear. And 20 gold. Oh, this menu is dense. Weapon, training spear. Did that say... Oh, okay. Well, that was weird. Why is it ch blue and red? <laughs> well, that's that's a weird interpretation of colors. That's not normally how the what those c colors mean, but uh, right on. Okay. Um, just changing established norms for the hell of it. Sure. Wooden shield, sure, we'll equip that too. Does this person have anything to say? I can't believe I've been locked up in a place like this. They told me I was selling suspicious goods, but I swear that all of my products are legitimate. Won't someone please let me out of this cell? Alright, go ahead and save. Kinda uh, I kind of missed the no-nonsense of the previous game. So we're heading west. Just another town with no fights along the way. Okay. I assume that was just luck. And that there was no random encounters. I probably would have, like, forced a random encounter within, like, the uh, area between this town and that, that, uh, castle. 
See a canoe floating in the water. It must belong to someone here in town. Um, I would have forced uh, combat, like maybe make an uh, invisible event on player's touch. I think uh, you got funneled into a single tile, and in that single tile, I would have forced there to be combat, so that way the player has a chance to experience combat for sure before entering um, the, the cave. Which I imagine uh, will be next after this town. Rags. I feel like these icons are the same as um, the previous game. I'm wondering, since these kind of have a similar color palette, this game and the previous game I played, I wonder if there's a tile set that just that they've used. Is it exactly the same? I don't quite recall, honestly, how similar they are in their design. I only have 35 gold, but I have plenty of healing herbs, so probably don't need to do that right now. Probably the same pack. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. But, you know, the, the art is so um, minimalistic that I, I can imagine someone making uh, you know, uh, making this art by themselves. Though the icons might come from a similar pack, and maybe the tile set itself, um, didn't. <sighs> hmm. Shiny orb. Twenty-four gold. By the way, what does this shiny orb do? Okay, so it's like a collectible. Welcome to the magic shop. Do you have, do any of the spell books catch your eye? Uh, I don't know who uses magic. Do you just teach magic to anyone? Strength ring. All right, I guess here is just um, kind of like to stock up and get ready for your first area and then that's it. I don't think there's anything I need to do. I used to take my canoe out on the lake every day, but after an injury, I just can't row like I used to. So he owns it, but I don't think there's anything I can do with it. What about the well? Oh, I can go down the well. Alright. Freeze! I guess we'll find out uh, how magic is handled. on. Alright, let's see if we can actually get to some combat. That timer is just ticking away. Yeah, there's been a couple of areas where, like, the player gets funneled into a single tile. So I would have, like, forced combat here. Are there random encounters? Okay, yes. So, yeah, I think it's just like a low encounter rate. Oh yeah, also these uh, these enemies are definitely the same as the uh, previous game. So yeah, there must be some sort of pack out there for like NES games or something. So anyways, yeah, I would have like used like here, that single tile or here. It, it, I think it would be a little bit more obvious if you put it here. So I would have put it like here. Um, just put like an invisible, um, you know, event 
and on player touch and make it make it look like it was a random encounter um, but it's not actually and that way it would force the player it would ensure 100% for sure um, that players will have at least um, one combat encounter before going into the cave. Head is dangerous. I cannot let you pass without permission from the king. Excuse me, my name is Alfin, and I am the captain of the royal guard of. See, see, this is this is like the contrast of of the two NES games, right? Um, in that other game, I feel like if I had gotten here, it would just be like the guy would be like, "You can't pass." And that would literally be his only line. And then the other guy would be like, "No, I can pass." And he'd be like, "Oh, you're right." And then that would be the end. Uh, excuse me, my name is Alfin, and I'm captain of the Royal Guard of Alfgard. My companion and I have been granted permission through passage. Ugh. Ugh, that tasted awful. Through the passage cave by the king himself, we request that we may pass. Ah, uh, Captain Alfin, I apologize. I did not recognize you. It's awfully dark in the cave. Very well, you may pass. There is no need to apologize. Allow us to pass, and then you may resume your duty. Yes, Captain. Yeah, that was, uh... A lot of dialogue. Let's try this fancy freeze skill out. So one thing I will say it's realizing that these games are um, just built from like some asset packs, which there's nothing wrong with because my game uses a lot of asset packs as well. Um, it's just that r upon realizing it, it kind of takes out some of the um, uh, some of what made the previous game kind of compelling. And it's unfortunate that this game is first. Uh, however, like I said, uh, at least so far they just work without any hiccups. Yes. Um, like, I will say, like, at least with the previous game, nothing is taking away the fact that it just got straight to the point. However, I'm starting to feel like that might be the only special thing about that game. The art and the music I don't think was too special. Um, and uh, the combat here is feeling mostly the same. Very, very traditional JRPG. Just uh, do damage. I do suppose that, um, the, um, previous, uh, previous game did have some, like, plugins and stuff in there to kind of give it a unique identity as well. Um, because I think they had, uh, like, the start was interesting as well. Um, you know, it was like, uh, you're a beautiful baby, uh, whatever and you pick boy or girl and then you are uh, what class which is a nice touch um, that doesn't necessarily require a plug-in um, but the encyclopedia thing was uh, un even though despite it being buried behind player exploration um, is a nice addition to the game here I'm not sure how much uh, like uniqueness exists um 
It just feels pretty standard RPG Maker, but with an NES skin. Which honestly, in my opinion, is, is more appropriate. Um, if you're just gonna do like your standard, you know, RPG Maker fare, then this is how I would skin it, you know? Um, but, I don't know if there's really that much... Uh, compelling interest here. That does 39 damage. How much does... He did 51. Okay, so it's like the magic attack and... the physical attack are the same? I guess there might be some resistances, maybe? I'll have to try magic again. On another enemy, on a different enemy besides the bat. And see if it does more damage. Okay, I said besides the bat, can we run? Fail to escape, okay. Alright, there we go. Let's just use healing herb on these guys. Alright, here we go. Something different. Alright, let's try freeze on these guys, see if it does anything. Okay, that did 56. But I think there might be damage variants. I'll try freeze again. I just want you to defend. Oh, that did 61. It does have damage variants, but like... Um... Yeah, I, I think... The bats just had resistances to ice. Oh, it's 30 minutes. Let me just see what's up those stairs. Is it a boss, or is there... Okay, and save. Nope, I didn't mean to do that twice, that's okay. I think this is gonna create a bridge. Oh my god, I just wanna get to the boss. Yeah, stop, something is coming. First, it seems that a fight is the only option. Prepare yourself for battle. Alright, here we go. He doesn't have any magic, does he? No, I don't think so. He only has one MP. But he's just the do damage guy. That did a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage! I only have one healing herb, right? Yeah. Um, so I'll just let you heal. Oh, holy shit! That's a lot of fucking damage! That's a lot of damage! Uh, is this because I ran from so many fights? This is... ...really unforgiving, I feel like. Alright, we're done. Spent most of the time just... ...just in dialogue, I feel like. But that boss, I, I don't know, maybe it's because I ran from so many fights. Um, but that... I mean, I, at best, like, I was, like, I, I noticed that my levels were, like, um, barely, uh, ba like, it was, like, maybe 50%, just, like, barely past 50%. So, I feel like, there's, first of all, there's probably not that many levels in the game, which is totally fine. My game doesn't have that many levels. 
but also that the levels are really slow to acquire. So I would say at best I'd probably be level 2 by the time I fight that boss. And I feel like there should be at least... Uh, hey, Primo's, Mr. Primo is finally here. Uh, I feel like there should be at least like... W one level of leeway on fighting the boss. Especially if it's the first boss, too, right? That was the very first boss that I came across. So, it, it's funny, because the previous game was saying that it was, like, supposed to be, like, an ultra-hard uh, JRPG, and it seemed totally, perfectly balanced. Uh, meanwhile, this game feels a lot less perfectly balanced, and I don't think it sells itself as being a difficult game. Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess you have a point, um, I don't know, I, it's not that I'm saying that my game's a, a standard to go by, I'm, I'm kind of saying, like, um, what am I trying to say? I, I'm, I'm not saying it's a standard to go by, I'm just saying it's like, I guess it's, it, it is sort of just like defensive speak. So I probably don't need to do that, but it's kind of like saying, it's kind of like calling that out. So it's it's not to say, it's to have clarity. There we go. I, I finally got there. It's to have clarity. It's like, um, I don't want people to misconstrue the fact that when I say, you know, for in this example, you know, you only have 10 levels, like using certain language, people might, uh... Some people might interpret that as me saying, like, it's bad that you have so few levels. So, you know, it's it's to really have, like, no no ambiguity whatsoever. I'm saying, uh, you, don't, you only have a few levels, but that's okay because, you know, I do it in my game too. So it's just kind of like a equivalence here, saying, like, you you did that, but I did it as well, so it's totally fine. Anyways... It's okay. Uh, it's okay do to do because Nolan does it too. It's okay to do because Nolan does it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if he don't, you can't either. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true because uh, I'm pretty sure your game does a lot of stuff that I don't do. But uh, your game is fun, and Wu TBM's game looks interesting and does a lot of shit that my game certainly doesn't doesn't do. And for sure, Michael Michael Primo's games are just all sorts of whack. I have no idea what's going on in Michael Primo's games, and they're definitely uh, not uh, not uh, what I'm doing. Uh, I get you. Just doesn't sound like that to me. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, bad. Mo oh, sorry. I didn't read what he said. Uh, let's see, it's always better than. This mistake was made by AAA developers, so I can do that too. Yeah, bad mindset to have. I'll agree with that. Um, anyways, but it, it also... When I say that, it also does kind of come off as, like, defensive. It's kind of like... Um, like I said, it's to prevent um, people from misconstruing what I'm saying. So I'm kind of, like, putting up a defense to say, like, no, I do it in my game too. Um, and so, you know, I think it's not necessary for me to do that, so, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't need to do that, so if I do it, feel free to call me out, um, and, uh, I'll just not do that. <laughs> I mean, unless I feel like I need to, I mean, obviously sometimes I'm gonna, see, I'm doing it right now, I'm doing it right now, I'm basically doing the same thing, I have to explain myself. Any good games from the dubs today? Actually, yeah, you missed the first game. It was not too terrible, although it was kind of let down. Like, at first, I thought it was pretty good until I played this game, and I realized, oh, these two games are actually using the same asset packs. And, um, yeah. Uh, those asset... When I realized that they are actually the same asset packs, it does kind of take away something special from the previous game. So, anyways, let's let's get to grading it. Uh, Eternal Tale doesn't have polish, doesn't have accessibility because it didn't have any uh, controls. Um, clarity, it was more clear than the other one, than the previous game. 
told me to go west and then go to the cave. Um, yeah, that, that'll be fine. Uh, balance, nah, that first boss kind of threw the balance off. Unique identity, um, see, I almost want to take away unique identity from the previous game, because I feel like, it's like, I either have to give both of them the same point, or I have to give ni neither of them the, the same point. That's not right. Either I give them a, both of them a one, or I give both of them a zero. Um, uh, if you want some Herald Jam games or NES like stuck in the liminal and rage against the dying, for example, I I don't really want NES games. Uh, the reason why I went with NES style games is just because um, Exony, the first game that I played, which I meant to play last week, but I didn't, so I kind of rolled it over into. Yeah, you are you are right. You need. You're you're right. Thank you for uh, pointing that out. Unique identity is not just based on visuals. Um, let me uh, reply to Michael Primo, and I'll come back to that. Um, so, anyways, uh, Exony. What was that? What was I even fucking saying? Uh, yeah, I, I rolled Exony over into this this week's stream. And the reason why it's titled uh, NES Games is because, um, coincidentally, Eternal Tale was a game that I kind of had on my list for a little while to try playing, just because um, I did the logo art for the box art, not for the actual in-game title menu uh, logo. Um, and it also had a similar style. It turns out they have similar styles because they're both using the same asset pack. Um... So, you know, it's like two out of three of the games, the majority of the games that I'm playing tonight have uh, NES aesthetic to them. So that's, that's just the, the title, bringing co consistency, co coherency to uh, the games that I'm playing. Just like last time was kind of like black and white games. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, to address uh, Mr. Simple Gaming, Mr. Orc... Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, I even mentioned that, I think, in the description that uh, unique identity is determined on by how well the game is able to exist on its own. This can include how well it stands as a game and not a product of the engine, or how unique its art, mechanics, writing, etc. are compared to other games in the industry. So, yeah, you are right about that. Um, and so I will um, continue to give Exony that one point simply because... It seemed like it set out to be an NES-like game, and it accomplished that. Is it actually unique? No, but it's that's kind of the point. Um, meanwhile, this is like almost the same thing. This game, uh, Eternal Tale, has set out with the same goal, but I'm not quite sure it quite achieved that in the same way that uh, Exony did. Um... Like, it's borderline. Um, so, anyways, I'm still, I'm gonna say that it's a no. So, yeah. Uh, no. So, uh, that's it. Uh, two points. Clarity and uh, unique identity. Um, yeah, right? Yeah, the first game was just like not fucking around. It's just like we're gonna get you right into the right into things. Um, so yeah, uh, this game had quite a little bit of extra talking and kind of just like wandering around. Like before the game was put into motion, like here's my quest. Um, it feels like there was quite a bit of wandering around um, before we got to the the here's my quest point. In the game so anyways yeah um, I'm gonna stick with that too on that so all right let's move on to the last game of the night uh, and yeah I'm uh, pretty tired so I'm I'm kind of glad I, I decided to move uh, drop down to three games. So the streams are gonna be a little bit shorter because I mean 
It depends on how much bullshit I talk. Um, I can pause the timer now, but I I have reduced the game time to 30 minutes. Um, and uh, then I've also reduced the games down to three. And um, yes, uh, yeah, so the streams are a little bit shorter, but I think that's kind of better, especially for the archive viewers, because uh, like... Some of my streams previously were getting into like the four to four and a half hour mark, which is just kind of nuts. <laughs> kind of crazy. Kind of crazy that <laughs> someone sit there for four and a half hours watching it. I mean, the nice thing is, is you know, I'd put timestamps and, and uh, break things up into chapters, which I do that because, you know, folks can stop the they can watch it in in parts you know it's like i'm gonna watch this game and then they might stop and go do something else and then maybe the next day come back and watch the next game so you know it's not really meant to be watched in a single sitting um but uh anyways uh having moved it into uh this shorter stream i think is better for my archive viewers and also because uh, yeah, I'm I'm getting pretty tired again. It's it's having you know having a regular like early morning schedule instead of sleeping in until you know fucking noon uh, when you're unemployed. <laughs> it's like oh I'm I'm actually uh, kind of more of an early bird person uh, when I have t a fucking alarm to wake up to. So <laughs> um, let's just uh, let me get caught up on chat here, see what Mr. Primo said. I played Patch Quest, watching a devlog about the game recently. Yeah, well they had, um, and that's actually um, why I uh, played it, uh, why I own it in the first place is because they had one particular devlog that seemed to do super well in the YouTube algorithm and got promoted to basically everyone. And, um, that was, uh, the, the, it was called, uh, how not to make an indie game. And, um, I watched that devlog. I don't know how long ago it was probably a couple of years ago. And I was like, I support what this dude is doing. And so I bought his game for no other reason than to just support him. But I never actually played it until last weekend. I played it. Um, so, you know, you can watch the archive of me playing it. Uh, so yeah, I played it last weekend, um, because I didn't have any non-RPG Maker games in the lineup and decided, now nah, I'll just go into my backlog and, uh, we'll play, uh, and, and play that, see what it's about. And I actually enjoyed it. It's actually quite, quite fun and very, very well made, actually. It's a very well made game. Um... What I didn't mention, I, I probably should have brought this up in, in the just chatting section, but I guess we're in another just chatting section now. Um, after that stream, the next day, my girlfriend and I, um, it does have a local co-op mode. And so my girlfriend and I, we actually played uh, the local co-op together. She's not much of a gamer. Uh, she does struggle with uh, having to manage two analog sticks. Um... But uh, she did her best, and she seemed to have a lot of fun. When you start exploring, like, we I, uh, in the stream, I kind of only explored the areas, like, right around the camp. But when you, like, start getting further away from the camp, it gets pretty damn tough. And I think it started getting a little bit too tough for her capabilities, because she's just not very good at uh, moving and aiming with, the uh, you know, two analog sticks, doing uh, twin stick shooter kind of stuff. Um, so I don't know if we're going to play more of it because I think it might be too difficult for her, but for what we did play, she was having quite a lot of fun. So, uh, I hope it will be released on the Switch. First version was weird. Yeah. Uh. So, uh, anyways, um... Next thing uh, I'm going to play is Miss Light. Uh, this is a Unity game. And uh, they do have a Kickstarter coming up. So I guess we'll... Uh, I've put their Kickstarter down in the... Um, down in the description as well. Um, oh, that was actually something I wanted to do. I wanted to talk about uh, Kickstarters. Um, 
I don't really have a lot of experience with this, um, but I do still kind of want to bring up a few, like, kind of broadly speaking points about um, Kickstarter in general. Maybe these points I bring up, maybe some people already know, maybe not, I don't know, but I want to go ahead and, all right, Mr. Primo, uh, but I want to go ahead and just uh, bring them up anyways. So first, um, let's just take a look at the, the store page and then we'll look at the, their Kickstarter. Um, so uh, this is Miss Light, a side-scroller adventure game with a slight touch of thriller. Use the powers of your flashlight to light up the shadow creatures that roam uh, trot the forest and seek your way out. I think that's a typo right there. Uh, use the flashlight as your main weapon of defeating the shadows, the shadow creatures, kind of like Alan Wake. <laughs> Shoot, dodge, or counter the bullet hell-like attacks of all your enemies to survive. Uh, not really a fan of that. I played another game. It was kind of fun. It's a Metroidvania game called Rabby Ribby or Ribby Rabby. I don't remember the, the order of those two words, but it's one of the, it's, it's Rabby Ribby or Ribby Rabby. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Um... And it also was a side-scroller, Metroidvania-like um, um, game with, like, bullet hell attack patterns. And, yeah, I don't know. I don't really like the combination very much. Um, so, I don't know. I, I probably won't personally enjoy that too much. We'll have to see how bullet hell-y it gets. Um, doesn't look too intense here. Um, rabby, ribby, ribby, rabby, whatever it is, uh, had some pretty intense bullet patterns. Um, so, you will have to see with this game. Uh, gain light drops by defeating enemies to become stronger, or use them to buy items, upgrades, and costumes. Navigate through five areas of the forest to find your way out, defeating strong enemies to rescue spirits of children trapped in the Shadow Realm. Find the secret pages hidden throughout the forest to learn more about events that transpired before your arrival. Unlock new powers and use them to clear puzzles blocking your path. So it sounds like it has some Metroidvania-like uh, systems in it. We'll have to see about that. Uh, I do like the store page. It's very colorful. They've broken up the different sections with uh, headers. Um, they have very, very fat buttons on here that you just cannot miss almost obnoxiously large but uh that's fine some controls down here i really hope that they put this information in the game um it's not technically released yet but they do have a demo available so i uh have downloaded the demo um and uh now i would like to take a look at their kickstarter and just talk about some stuff um I don't know how much I'm going to have to say. I kind of thought about this only briefly a little bit earlier today. It's like, oh, I should probably mention this, and I should probably mention that. We'll just have to see. Uh, the game, this light is, uh, okay, we already read that. Use the powers of the flashlight. Uh, okay, we already read that. They have a bunch of uh, gifts. Oh, I didn't bring this up either. They have the, probably all the same gifts here as they do on their store page. And they it seems like they've made the same mistake that I made with my game, where it's the one criticism I would have of my store page for my game. Um where uh uh where did it go um t -t 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 dashboard where uh i do i do think you should have gifts uh don't misunderstand that however i also think it's important to have still images as well um because gifts um you generally have to uh, upload in a smaller resolution so you're not getting quite as much information there um and then also, um, it's good to have still images for, I don't know, promotional purposes. This goes like back to what I talked about a couple of streams ago with the um, having a press kit. And if you don't have a press kit, then people are going to be nabbing uh, pictures, uh, still images uh, off of uh, your store page. And of course, if you don't have any still images, then, uh, the, well, then they can't. So I, I, do, I think there's just... I, Still images shouldn't be ignored. I know I did it here, but uh, do as I say, not as I do is kind of what I'm going for here. Um, so having still images would be uh, ideal, not just GIFs. So anyways, um, so all this information here is basically the same. It's kind of crazy how much they've like broken it up with all these GIFs. 
Um, I don't really know uh, a lot about Kickstarter and the Kickstarter demographic. I don't know if this is what people would like. To me, personally, if I was going to uh, back this, it's it's kind of a nitpick thing, so I might still back it if I was interested, but it's like it's you are like stuffing all the information between like too large of an area i talk about having these headers but those headers should be small so it just gives you it gives you an idea of like that's a break in this information right you really shouldn't have like basically a whole page worth of images between bits of information um, it just becomes a nuisance to have to scroll through all of that. Also, uh, the other thing, too, uh, I've become quite aware of, once again, because I'm working, and I have some downtime, so I use my phone a lot more on my data rather than on Wi-Fi. And uh, I've become very keen of uh, pages that uh, like to load a lot of images. Um, that starts to eat up users' data really quick as well. Um, Especially GIFs. GIFs will uh, definitely eat up users' data. So it would be nice if you would not just have a bunch of GIFs uh, dumped on your uh, page for anyone who's browsing on mobile um, and may have limited uh, data. <laughs> so anyways... Um, yep. Yep, yep, yep. There's some more information here, like these are skills, it looks like. Um, so, neat, costumes, golds. Well, it's 100% funded, it looks like. It's an anti-foam peasant mechanism, <laughs> yeah. Um... Oh, I guess maybe the. Oh, I guess maybe it's finished. The Kickstarter is finished. Yeah, I guess so. Um. So it did get fully funded, which is nice. Um. So, anyways, so I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, the anti phone. Uh layout here clearly doesn't matter because it still got funded um i do think that this could possibly hurt um the game's marketing a little bit it's not like the biggest deal in the world but i just would be mindful of that um so it doesn't seem like they reach some of their stretch goals here that's kind of fine I i'm not i know like stretch goals is like very like obviously it exists with a lot of kickstarter games the one thing i see with like stretch goals is what often happens is that they usually wind up being pretty ambitious because you kind of need it to be ambitious right because if it's like a new costume like no one's really excited like stretch goals are there to like incentivize your uh what would you call them Backer backers um the incentivize your backers to like share it with with their friends and whoever else because obviously the the more people who um can support it the more cool stuff they get so you want ha you want to have stuff that's cool that excites people to uh promote your kickstarter um the problem is is what often happens is that there's really ambitious stuff there and now they've promised that really ambitious stuff because they reach those stretch goals and now that they promise that stuff, it winds up delaying the game um, for like a really long time. Uh, stretch goals really only have one reason to exist, and it's so you can keep your goal low and avoid not reaching it, resulting in you. Yeah, I understand that. Um, like, yeah, you'd you'd want to have it low. So that way you can at least uh, get the money, whatever money has been backed to you. But, um, yeah, I I don't know. I would just, th this, this area is where, like, broken promises happen. I'm almost, would 
actually kind of be happy for these folks that this is all that they got. They didn't reach any of these other stretch goals. Um, not that these are the most exciting things, like an Xbox release. Mm, I, I think Xbox, out of all the game consoles, is one of the easier ones to get on. So they'll probably be able to do that eventually anyways. Um, new game area, like that one. That one is could be potentially just nuts um, with a bunch of extra development time. Um, I don't know how the game is set up, but I don't know. I could foresee that being like that could easily become something that would delay the game because they reach that stretch goal. More more languages could also easily delay the game um, because it takes a long time to have people um, translate things. Although to be fair, the language thing kind of uh, like that could always come in a later update. I suppose the new area could too, technically. Um, Anyways, I I don't know. To me, I don't feel too positive whenever I see, like, ridiculous stretch goals. Um, but to be fair, I should make this very clear. I really don't back Kickstarter projects at all. Um, it's kind of funny because there's been, like, this whole... Um, for all the people who are terminal, I would say terminally online, but really it's not even just terminally online. People who are terminally on YouTube... Um, probably know of some of the, the drama that's been uh, kind of stirred up recently. Um, and maybe this is why I wanted to talk about Kickstarter some, but uh, there has been uh, a deal with an old content creator on on YouTube named iDubs. And it's kind of funny that uh, this whole drama, he used to have a series a long, long time ago um, that was called Kickstarter Crap, where he would review Kickstarter projects. Um, and... I do think there are a lot of assail a lot of salient points, despite him being somewhat of a offensive figure. I'm not going to really discuss the whole thing that's going on right now. That's not the point of me bringing this up. I'm just saying that he's fresh on my mind because of that. Um, and anyways, I think there's a lot of salient points to what he was saying uh, in those in those videos, despite him presenting it in a fairly offensive way. Um, one of those things that I also remember him and many others harping on is um, when you uh, get down into things like risks. Now, these guys are totally fine with their risks, um, but it's just for others who may be considering a uh, doing their own Kickstarter, uh, Mr. Orc. Um, risks and challenges always feels like that's the section of the Kickstarter where you feel like you need to shit on your project. Um, but no, um, it's the section to provide transparency for your project to instill trust into you know your your backers um so a lot of people like want to avoid putting anything that sounds negative in the risks and challenges even still they kind of wash it out with um uh positivity here that's not wrong uh i should say it's not wrong but uh to me it, it, and i don't know if this would this might not be a very effective method but i feel like I would take this very seriously about here are the risks and I would just paint it out very clearly because like I said, this is like the area where you should be transparent about the risks and the challenges uh, with whatever your project is. Um, so, and people don't want to say things like, you know, oh, I might have trouble, you know, finding a publisher or whatever. I don't know, whatever it could be. Um, but no, this is just, this is just something that you should be like, these are facts. Like here, um, I, he does bring up a good point is, um, see the biggest risk for this project is the success of the campaign. Should the goals not be reached, it might take longer to reach high levels of quality. I'm aiming for small hurdles and challenges are always expected and can be overcome. Um, that's fine. Um, but it's also kind of expected it's kind of like a duh <laughs> so i i would include that of course um but i would make sure that you make other points like one of the obvious ones is that you know when you when backers back a kickstarter project they are kind of it, it shouldn't be this way but it is this way when they back the project they are kind of feeling like they are 
buying something, even though that's not what it should be. It, it's really more like investing in something, not buying something. But anyways, a lot of people tend to think that they are buying something, which means they are expecting to get something and they are expecting to get that thing by your promise. And that means you have to promise a delivery date. However, I think we all know uh, when it comes to game development that meeting dates uh, is sometimes hard, especially when you are a hobbyist developer. Um, sometimes you have other things that you need to take care of in life, and when you take care of those things, that means that's time that you're spending doing that and not making your game, which may potentially result in you having to delay. So that is one of the challenges. It's both a risk and a challenge for uh, your project, is being able to deliver the game on time. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't even have to be a risk of it not happening. You can make that clear. In fact, you know, if you want to wash the risk, because like I said, it's hard for people to, to go into the risks and challenges and s say just wholly negative things like these are problems. Um, so if you want to wash it out a little bit with some positivity here, you can totally put that there and be like, this is game is going to happen no matter what. Um, it's just that I need money, to, as a lot of them put it, help us get across the finish line faster with higher quality. Um, so, you know, something like that. That's totally fine as well. Like, I'm not saying that the, the project is not going to happen. It's just that uh, as a uh, crowdfunding campaign, there are some challenges, such as being able to meet deadlines. Um, you know, there depending on what you're promising, you could there could be things that may... Um, potentially not be possible to be met or may not be possible to be met at release but will have to be met at a later date. I don't know, something like, as I was saying earlier, like if they were to, if you were to include some sort of stretch goal like a new game area, um, you could say, well, you know, this game area, I'm promising it but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to release it at, you know, on 1.0, it will have to come uh, at a later date or something like that, you know, S just stuff like that. I don't know. W to me, when I look through, when, if I care to look through a Kickstarter, I want to have confidence in their ability. So number one is I would need proof of work. Um, you know, I don't want Joe, Joe Blow to like make a Kickstarter page and promise a super cool game. And yet he has nothing behind him to back up his words no you know completed games you're safe there mr orc you have a couple completed games um number two which i think you're also safe from is um the asking goal this one's challenging because you when people ask for too little um it sounds like a joke it sounds like well buddy just fucking work a part-time job and you can pay for that you know um, so when it's too low, it can sound a little bit ridiculous. On the other hand, if it's too high, uh, you sound like you're out of your fucking gourd and you just want all the money under the sun for no reason. Uh, so it's like, you got to find that, that perfect balance. You got to find the right budget that, that matches what your game is. If you're doing a giant MMO, then you need a big budget because MMOs are some of the most expensive games to make. If you are making a side-scrolling indie game, you probably need not nearly as much. Uh, this is Mexican dollars. I guess it's Mexican dollars, some Mexican pesos. I'm not sure. What is, what is MX? I assume Mexican pesos. Um... Yeah, to USD. Yeah, Mexican pesos. So, um, MXN. So, MXN to USD. So, they got 60,000. Yeah, so that, that sounds totally, totally reasonable for a uh, 2D side scrolling game holy shit inflation is nuts in mexico <laughs> 60 thousand pesos is just three thousand dollars you gotta be kidding me oh man <laughs> i thought the exchange rate in japan sucked uh anyways um 
Yeah, I guess I should have noticed that here. Like, uh, $20 is just a thank you. Like, yeah, that's, yep. All right, anyways. Um, so, yeah, that like, that's for a 2D side-scroller. Like, I would say, like, 10000 is kind of like the, the upper limit, I think, on on what you can ask for for a 2D side-scroller. So, um, the other thing I look for is um, uh, it's going to be clarity on what, what the idea is. And also, I would want... Um, I think... Uh, I think this is a requirement of Kickstarter, but I'm still going to mention it anyways, is make sure that there's already some work done on the project. It can't not just be an idea. It's got to be something you've started working on, but you need the f the money to help you get across the finish line, as, as I've already said. So, um, again, something that uh, is not a problem for you, because I know you've been working on the game for a long time, so totally fine. Um, and like I said, uh, clarity on what the, the what the project is. So plenty of information here. Um, I also said like I probably wouldn't break it up so much with such uh, like uh, gifts. I probably have like I don't know how I would do this. Maybe uh, like this right here, the game, and then a gif, and then I probably have a couple of blocks of text, um, and then maybe another gif. I I wouldn't have this many gifs either. I would pick you know maybe three choice gifs to use, um, especially when they're this large. Um, they take up quite a large portion of the page. Um, so yeah, here this is totally fine. I wouldn't count these among them. It's a small thing, like like I said, like, um, like th this gift thing is like a really small detail, but um, like I don't think it would ruin a Kickstarter campaign, but I, I do think, I don't know, it, it's irritating a little bit. <laughs> it's like, I just want to read, I want to get the information about your game, and you are um, hiding it underneath tons and tons of GIFs and pictures and shit. Please let me just get to the information about the game so I can decide whether I want to back it or not. Um, so, anyways... Um, this is also good. I would like to see how the funds are being um, used. So um, I also uh, like. I would like to see this, but I also feel like a lot of these are total bullshit because the, I don't think the developers really have a clear budget either. They're like, uh, this is probably what it looks like, but who the <laughs> fuck knows? As an indie developer, you don't have like fucking accountants who are like planning budgets or anything. But at least I would like to see some sort of effort into, like, it's kind of weird to have, like, the 27%, the 23%. Maybe they do have some sort of an accountant there that's, like, crunching numbers to set up the perfect budget for them. And that's why you have weird numbers like this. I doubt it since, you know, it's they got $6,000 worth of money. That's not enough to pay for an accountant to, to do this. Um, so, you know, I would have just a fairly simple budget just to kind of give a rough idea. I'm going to make a graph that just says blackjack hookers <laughs> because as you said, they're always bullshit. <laughs> That's 50% over here. This is blackjack. This is hookers. <laughs> I, I might be okay with that, honestly. <laughs> um, music uh, that's fine nothing to say about that that's fine the team this is also good uh, to kind of know more about the people who are working on it um, I think that's good if there's a team um, if it's just you you wouldn't need to have a whole dedicated you know the team section I'd probably just put a short blurb couple of sentences three at most um, right at the beginning about yourself, and then that's that's all that's really necessary. Just enough to instill confidence that you are someone who's capable of making a game, and then just focus on providing information about the game from there. Now, of course, if you do have a team, then you'd probably want to do a nice write-up on the the folks who are part of, who are helping you. Uh, I'm sure you'd get at least some backers just because of the uh, yeah uh, it, the irony would probably win me over. 
um, environmental commitment, visit our environmental, is this just a Kickstarter? Okay, yeah, so that's just Kickstarter. All of our rewards are digits, that means, I think that's, okay. Cool, whatever. Um, yeah, anyways, so I think that's a lot of information. That's a lot of information about uh, Kickstarters. That I don't think there's anything else I want to go over with this. Uh, I will just mention, um, if you are not someone who get... Uh, let's see, there's, there's some different options here for, like, Kickstarter page critique. Um, if you are someone who is not so easily offended, as I mentioned, there is iDub's old content. Despite it being older, it's still fairly valuable information even to this day um i do believe if you just go to um his channel like i said there's <laughs> the drama that's going on um but uh yeah there's his kickstarter crap playlist right there and i think you should be able to access all of his videos um just from there um and despite being uh controversial figure um did you show you did did you show me your page not yet no i mean you sent me a link but it's like i can't see anything yet it's like it's this is not available yet uh anyways so there's uh idubs and then kind of in a similar of vein of uh somewhat edgy humor i think there is uh i think red spray red spray also older content um, Kickstarter. This is also older. Kickstarter, non-starter, yeah. Um, this is also older content, but again, uh, just valuable information. Um, we'll, uh, we'll come back to that. Um, who else does it? I felt like there was someone else who did Kickstarter reviews. Um... I think there is Larry Bundy Jr. I'm not actually subscribed to the guy, but I think he does it. I should probably search Kickstarter. Yeah, Kickstarter scammers. It's not like the Red Spray and uh, Kickstarter crap are like reviews of the whole like Kickstarter page itself. This is not really like a review of the Kickstarter pages um, themselves, but instead just uh, like talking about uh, different scams and stuff like that. So it, it may not be quite as informative as the other ones. Um, so anyways, those are just a few different folks that talk about Kickstarter stuff. Um, like I should, like I already gave a warning that IDUP's content can be offensive, so it's not something that you should really watch if you are someone who's easily offended. Um, or, uh, yeah. Just be careful with that kind of stuff. Um, but the points are still valuable. I'll put links to it down below um, to all of these guys. I'll have to remember to do that. Uh, I'll have to remember iDubs, Rhett's Prey, and uh, Larry Bundy Jr. So, uh, and let's take a look at your Kickstarter, and then we'll finally play this game. This is a private preview. Let's see it. All right. So the pre pledge is 2,500 euros. Seems good, seems fair. Um, features, combat. I mean, this is, this is good stuff, yeah. I can see why you put this here. I would maybe just reduce the amount maybe just like cut this one out here just because at a glance i i see why it's here yeah because you have that little blurb there but at a glance it just kind of looks very similar um Yeah, I so I think it's 
having the protagonists and stuff there, that's fine. Um, I'd really want to get to the information um, right away. Like I said, that's the one thing that I am looking for is like cl clarity about what the project is. Uh, at a glance, it feels like you just have like uh, blurbs about the pictures. <laughs> Um, like here we have this, Australia, the main cities, central hub of the game. Um, yeah. The nice thing is, though, you also kind of already have an audience as well. Um, you already have somewhat of a platform. So, I don't know, I think you'll be okay. I would clean it up a little bit. Like, uh, you know, obviously my word's not, like, the end-all, be-all, so, um... Yeah. Lots of, lots of information here. I, it's just like I said, my main point is I just want to get to all of that information as quickly as possible. Um, as a solo developer, paying for everything is a massive undertaking and is limited. Two small purchases, commissions per month. Kickstarter gives me the opportunity to, well, kickstart the development of the game. That being said, the game games are projects of passions and will always be completed regardless of the success of the campaign. I will just take a whole lot longer to achieve the quality I'm aiming for. Yep. Good information. Uh, dungeons in addition to the large city. You'll be able to explore a variety of dungeons ranging from small to large. So I will say, yeah, so this, the Dungeons one is, I think, actually more important than you think, um, because your game is called Dungeon Rummage, so it's literally in the title. So I think, like, looking at this, I would probably want more information about Dungeons, um, the looting material thing could definitely be included in there as a bullet point. And the loot and crafting, um, no, that's fine. Yeah, no, no, I'm going to leave that page open, uh, and I'll, like, stare at it some more and, uh, think about it. And, you know, off the top, this is all, you know, just stuff I'm thinking about off the top of my head. So I'm going to move that over there to like my normal tabs. And I'm just going to leave it there and I'll stare at it some more later. In the meantime, uh, let's just get to playing this game because I'm tired and I want to go to bed. How am I doing on the beer? Uh, I'm also kind of need the I also kind of need to pee. Maybe we should do that. Now's a good time to actually take a pee break before we start the game. So, uh, I think I already queued up fiddle music. I sure did. I was ready for this. Um, and we only have time for one song. So, how about Turbulent Storm? Put that there. Put that there. And that one has a camera. Turn off the camera. Okay, be right back.
All right. Bye bye, fiddle music. Okay, let's launch this game. Miss Light. Made with Unity. We recommend a controller. Alright. I'll follow your instructions, game. Ether light. Check the options, audio, standard stuff, except it's a little bit quieter than your typical RPG Maker game. Yeah, looking pretty quiet. So let's. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's weird. It goes off. <laughs> it's kind of strange looking. Uh. Okay. Right on. Music sounds really fucking weird. Alright, game, resolution, brightness, okay. Wait, really? Okay, first of all, I hate this shit. I really, really hate when games just have you, like, click to go through the available options. I can't see all the options available. And, um... There's not, like, a drop-down menu. You just have to keep tapping. Fortunately, like, some of the, you know, like... Uh, full screen, ex uh, full screen exclusive games. Like when you have to keep switching it, you have to wait for like the the monitor to you know like adjust or whatever, um, which is much slower. At least here, it's like instant. Um, sucks that there's not 1440p. Although it's probably not necessary since it's pixel art. But that's the thing is like if there was a drop down menu, I could have just seen. Oh, hey, there's uh not 1440p. Um, and not have to sit here tapping through it to see, oh, where's 1440p, 1440p, oh, okay, there's no 1440p, alright. Uh, controls. I need to have different layouts, but you can't really rebind your keys, though. So, yeah, I think it's gonna be missing the accessibility point. Start a game. Really kind of want to hear this music too. This just sounds fucking weird. So weird. Very Unity like. <laughs> Animation. Very unity like inertia to the movement. Okay, so the music has disappeared. Um, funny sound effect. The camera kind of makes me feel sick. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs>
Today was another normal day. Every day has been boring lately. Mom cooked lasagna, which I guess was a highlight, and Dad still won't let me go out next to next week in next week's convention. I wish you were here, sis. Every day would be so much fun, but it's been five years already. Okay. That left bumper. Man, that is so slow to open. Okay, yeah, yeah. What is that, new? Why did it show that icon? Oh, I'm having a nightmare. This can't be real. Monsters don't exist. I don't know where I am. I'm so scared. I need to find my way out of this forest. Is there... Yeah. God, that is so weird. Like, it's like it has to take a long time to figure out what it's trying to do. The screen dims. It's like, okay, no, it's more steps than that. Sorry. It's like the action stops, the screen dims, the book opens, and then it's kind of like jank. It's like you get the animation opening, but it's like the book isn't quite fit to the screen. So suddenly when we get to this screen, it like just suddenly jumps to like the full size of the screen. What is this? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I don't know. Guess it doesn't matter. And now I just have a flashlight. Okay, <laughs> right on. Alright, so we have like some sort of- is that additive lighting right there? <laughs> I do kind of like how the music just like... <laughs> okay, save. Can I travel anywhere? No. Shop. That's weird. This one's really loud all of a sudden. I have nothing, so it doesn't matter. Ah, uh, okay, there we go. Man, that feels fucking weird. Oh, man. The controls feel, feel so strange. There's like a delay. There's such a long delay on that. Look. So it's like, down, down. Yeah, man, that's weird. Hmm? Oh, I see. Up in A. X. Oh. That delay on- why is there a delay on her, like, looking up? It feels so bad. I don't know what it wants me to do. Left stick and A? Oh, okay. That looks like it's going up. Am I crazy? It doesn't look like it's... Oh, I can't use my mouse to point at what I'm talking about. The stick right here, the animation in front of me, it looks like it's telling me to move the stick to look up. Not down. At least that was kind of satisfying. Kind of like that sound effect when they die, too. It's a good sound effect. <laughs> mm. 
Oh. This place is filled with shadow monsters. I really need to find a way out, but thankfully the flashlight can shoot beams of light and these monsters drop some stuff that makes the light even more powerful. It almost feels like magic. Cool. Can I drop down here? No, I guess not. What the fuck is this mu- What the fuck was that? I finally found pen and paper in this place. It's been so long since I came to this dark forest. And who knows how many days I've gone without eating or sleeping. There are dark creatures all around. Fortunately, I've been able to hide and find my way to this safe place. Okay. Uh -uh. Alright. Select. Okay, map, yeah. No. What the f Where's my health, anyways? Is it just her face in the top left corner? Yeah, I guess so. Really kind of didn't want to fall down that far, but okay. So that enemy is really kind of annoying because it, it, like, it really wants to get close to you where it's difficult to avoid its attack pattern. I really hate how the game, like, has to pause before it can open up any of these UI elements, too. Um, there's a dark presence in the place, and it's taking children from their homes. Today I saw... Okay, so, uh, alright, yeah. Is there a frog down there? What you doing? Okay, right on. Gizmo. Y yes, Gizmo. 
What do I do with you, Gizmo? Um. Okay. Z Coop. Uh, right on. Guess I'll just go down here anyways. Okay, maybe not. Uh, I guess I can't... Just a lot of weird, like, unexplained stuff that's just, just going on in this. I guess it's a boss. Can I charge? No. Ah, oh, you can't hit me there. Hoping for some cheese strats. This is super cool. Look at that healthy health bar. And look at... Oh. Oh. <sighs> Not really the most thrilling. I don't even know where that boss was. This way? Okay. I really feel like that. It's it's like I I can't really go where I want to go. There's always like shit that's in the way. <laughs> like the layout of some of this stuff. Okay, here's. I think I skipped this last time. I have a bunch of these little crystals. Let's see if I can buy something. I don't know what fear does. Is fear my health? I guess so. I don't know. Alright, so that's a damage upgrade by that. So the, the menu, the, the shop menu just kind of opens up automatically when you move near it. And so what you have to do is you have to use the D-pad to navigate because the analog stick is dedicated to moving to or away from the shop. It's kind of, I don't hate it, but it's also kind of weird because like my instinct is not to <laughs> I just kind of want to either navigate the menu, like, I would just want just a regular menu to open up is basically what I'm saying. Okay, here's the boss. Let's see how much damage I'll be doing now, now that I have an upgrade. Uh, not much more. Actually, it's quite a bit better. Oh. <sighs> this music, man.
This music annoys me, man. I, I hate this shit. This is fucking awful. Take me back up to yeah. Takes me back to where I was. Thanks for playing the demo. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that these guys were able to be successfully funded. Um. So it's a bright and happy future for them. I personally did not really enjoy this game very much, and the music drives me nuts. Oh, I should have actually listened to the main menu theme. I didn't really give it a proper listen when I first launched the game. Hello? Okay. Oh, no, no. Yeah, this is really the music that you want to introduce your game with? <laughs> Brow, brow, brow. <laughs> it just fucking kills me. Like, this is one thing. Right? Um, I think title menu music is, like, really important because it kind of sets the tone of what to expect for the rest of the game going forward. Um, it's kind of. It, it is your first impression, it's people's first impression of your game. I don't know, is that really what you want to go with for your for your title menu music? The brown 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 It it really it, it kind of reminds me of like this like um pseudo like tracker tunes, but like the, the writing itself um really kinda of reminds me of like the kind of stuff I would write when I was first starting to do music like i didn't do the chiptune stuff but the 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 writing stuff was the 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 wacky weird fucking ru music writing is kind of like that can i find any of my really old stuff um should be i'm pretty sure i still have some some of my really old stuff junkyard no main projects um, MFM years. No, that's like all the stuff. Uh, that's no, no, no. Ah, here we go. Here's some like really, really old stuff. Um, yeah, this is super duper old. Is it still open on the fiddles? Yeah, it's fine. This stuff is really bad. It's <laughs> basically the same thing. Their wow wow was lo lower an octave. My wow wow is higher octave. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of what their music reminds me of. <laughs> Let's see what about this one? This one's kind of old, right? Mm. 
Vikings is another one. Yeah. It's terrible. All right, enough of that. Yeah. Um, oof. Well, like I said, I'm glad these folks were able to um, get fully funded. Um, so, I, you know, good on them. Uh, I think the game will find some success. It's definitely not my game. Not my kind of game. Um, yeah, and the music kills me on it. <laughs> It's so funny. Let's uh, grade it, and then we can wrap up this stream. Uh, polish is gonna be a no. Um, a lot of the way that the like platforms and stuff are laid out is like, I like kind of annoying. Like I can't seem to get to where I want to go because I don't know. There's just like obstacles in the way, enemies in the way. There's just yeah. It's it. I feel like I talked about this before with one of the previous games. Accessibility, it's a no. Uh, clarity. Uh, I don't know on this one. Uh, they The tutorial... One of the tutorials was not very clear. And for that, I almost feel like I should give it a zero. They also didn't really tell you where to go. It's not like there's... A, I don't know if it's entirely necessary that they tell you where to go. But it's also kind of like... I don't know. Yeah. Balance seemed fine, I guess. Um, the 2D pixel platformer game with fucking weird ass music. Um, and even though it has a cutesy art style, there's like something dark and horrible going on. And I don't know. I'm going to give it a zero. <laughs> I'll give it a point for clarity, though. Honestly, that's fine. Um, yeah, it's a three. I really think um, it would be fine if they can. I don't know. There, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I don't. This unlike you know, like with Exony, like I could easily see this game reaching a five if it just cleaned up, just with an update, some of the stuff. Um, like with this game, some of the flaws are so fundamental that it would take a gross overhaul of the game. To be fair, I mean, who knows when this demo, like what build of the game this demo was um, made for? I think the game officially is launching in 13 days. Um, considering that the Kickstarter is already complete, I imagine the demo was out um, bef at the launch of the Kickstarter or before the, the Kickstarter, so that way folks could have something to play and preview. Um, so it could be a potentially old build of the game, and maybe possibly a lot of this stuff has already been fixed. I don't know, but it seems like there's some pretty deep fundamental things that need to be fixed. Now, the accessibility thing could easily be fixed. Uh, allow for rebinding keys, including the controller. If you, if you recommend a controller, then um, what I recommend is making sure that you allow people to rebind buttons on the controller. It's a much less common feature, but uh, it's something that I, I think is just as valuable as, um, as having rebind rebindable keys. Um, I know for sure, like, uh, you know, the Japanese layout, not on an Xbox button, but um, on, 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 if you look at the PlayStation, um, you know, you have X, circle, square, triangle, and um, let's make this full screen, and uh, circle is usually the accept button, which makes sense because, I mean, you'd usually use a circle for, like, highlighting something, like, that's what I want to do, and then you'd use an X for saying, nope, that's not right. So it makes it makes sense that circle would be select and X would be it would not be for some reason uh, in America they swap this around. I mean the buttons are still the same labels, but X is now accept and circle is not. Um, ever since I started playing games um, in Japan, that just by default used the circle circle accept X deny whatever cancel. Um, 
it makes more sense to me and i would love to be able to have more games uh, allow me to you know rebind buttons to, to work like that because it makes more sense to me um but uh, a lot of games just don't let you rebind controller um buttons which is just weird it's like if you're able to program rebindable keys why not program rebindable controller stuff too anyways um yeah that's 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 it for for that game and i think that might be it for this stream too um yeah i don't know if there's anything else to to say we'll close out a oh maybe not maybe let's not do that while obs is open so anyways uh yeah i think that's gonna be it for this stream um next weekend i'm not sure what i'm gonna do as is usually the case i don't think i'm gonna stream any games uh what i might do is uh i had mentioned when i joined uh gameforge's indie thing there were two campaigns going obviously i did ic red already um the other one was for a game called trigon i think it's what it's called um and so I think I'll go ahead and apply to get a key for that. Last time it took Gameforge forever to get me the IC Red key. So, I mean, I don't think I'll have the key for Trigon uh, next next weekend. Um, so I don't know. I think maybe next weekend we'll just do a, you know, like a game dev stream. Um, now, one thing actually, uh, one thing that... Uh, Wu Bam didn't exactly suggest this, but he gave me a good idea. Uh, in my previous stream, he talked about often thinking about using um, his uh, his you know uh, I don't know his, his video content thing uh, as a way to like as an excuse to go through his backlog of Steam games. And I kind of thought, you know, that's not a bad idea for a format for these streams because I stopped doing um, the, uh, like, game mechanic streams. Like, I stopped doing those a long time ago and now at this point. I think it's been probably five months or so. Um, and then I replaced it with doing, like, long play formats of uh, other people's games. But I don't, I'd only want to do long plays of games that actually interest me, and I just haven't had any. Patch Quest might be okay. I'd probably do a long play of that. But the other thing is, is those long plays were generally um, uh, R RPG Maker games. And right now, there aren't really any RPG Maker games that interest me enough to do a long play format uh, of, of them. Uh, so... I don't know. Uh, it kind of sounded like not a bad idea to have like uh, a stream where I play games, uh, where I play games on stream, just like I I do here. But rather than reviewing RPG Maker games and indie games, I just review whatever the fuck is in my backlog of Steam Steam games, which is actually not that many because I don't just buy games willy nilly just because it's on sale. I do have a handful that I've collected over the years. Um, so, uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. So it sounded like not a bad idea. I don't know how many games, like I said, I don't have that many in my backlog, so I don't know. Um, maybe I'll just play one or two games per stream. I don't know. It might be a format I'll try in the future. I don't think it's going to be next weekend, but it's something I'm considering. So we'll have to see. Um, well, I'll have to also have to see how that goes over because uh, as much as I want to not be the RPG Maker guy, um, I do think people still come to me as the RPG Maker guy. So if I just start reviewing not RPG Maker games, uh, I don't know if it's actually going to get the viewership that I normally get with these kind of streams. So anyways, um, did you see that weird game I sent you in the server? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, I think you sent me, like, uh, I'll invalidate your love or something. I think I had actually, like, looked at that previously, even before you'd sent it. It just, uh, didn't really interest me that much. Um, it probably would have been fine for either this week or, or even last week. Um, I didn't play it at the time, because that was May 10th. So I think that was 
Oh no, that was right after this one, this stream. Oh well, whatever. <laughs> I, I didn't want to play it. So, um, that's, that's the answer to that. So, anyways, um, I think I'm going to call the stream here. I'm really tired. So, man, I didn't even finish my beer. It's kind of funny how, uh, thinking back, just recalling, like, the amount of alcohol that I consume during the streams has, uh, steadily decreased, actually. Now I'm not even finishing a whole beer on these streams. Well, while previously I used to have a couple of Cokes and whiskeys, possibly even end it with a, with a beer at the end. Uh, but now it's just like, eh, it's like three quarters of a, uh, granted a, a tall boy, but still only three quarters of one. So, oh well, anyways, being sober, that's good. Uh, thanks so much for joining, and I guess I'll just do a game dev stream next time. So, see you next time. Bye.